Okay, today I want to talk about installing a passenger side right hand dummy mirror, non remote manual adjust mirror on your 6768. There's at least three reasons why you do this. The number one reason is you've spent all the money you possibly can and there's nothing else chrome to put on your car but this. That, that's a valid reason. The number two reason, this is my reason, it's not that I need the safety, I'm just sick of looking over to the right out of habit from my modern cars and seeing nothing going, oh yeah, no mirror there. Constantly do it. So I, I like to put these on my drivers for that reason. But the third, probably the most important reason is safety. That, that, that's a big blind spot right here. And this is your baby and uh, city traffic can get ugly. So let's, let's, let's get every safety measure we can. Here's another reason. If you let your kids drive the car, put one of these on. If you let your wife drive the car, put one of these on. So you'd think it would be as easy as buying it from us and poking it on the car, right? Here's the gasket, here's the screw, here's the mirror, put it on. No, it's not that easy. First off, let's look at this gasket they give you. This gasket is one step above better than nothing. I call that uh, bicycle inner tube material. It's hard to center. Uh, it doesn't have the raised ridge on it. When you tighten down, it's going to squeeze out. This is garbage. Throw this away. So open up the package, throw that away. The next piece of hardware they give you, I say they, we had this mirror, we, we got Scott Drake to make this mirror. They were already making the head. The head is the same as Mustang. We said here, do a reverse uh, mold of the driver's side base and use your existing head for your Mustang and voila, you've got a mirror you can sell me in the hundreds. And they did, and thank you very much, Scott Drake, for doing that. But this kind of bugs me. This is, this is the hardware they give you to install your mirror. That ain't gonna work. Yeah, it'll work for, oh, 20 or 30 times after you slam your door, but those are gonna loosen up. That is not how they were mounted from the factory. Take these and throw them in your extra screw pile. You might lose one in your sill plate or something and need one. Let me show you what you should have for mounting hardware. Here's the correct way to do it. These are called riv nuts, and these are basically threaded rivet, rivets. But the problem is you have to collapse them to work. And to collapse them, you need a specialty tool. I got this one at Harbor Freight. It didn't cost much. It's called the Nut Riveter. Again, it acts like a rivet gun, but it's meant to collapse these. So if you're like a lot of guys, you're, you're looking for an excuse to buy another tool. And who knows, you might use it again in 40 years. There's another way. Here, here's, here's, here's another way to collapse those uh, um, rib nuts. And I'll show you this on the car. But we sell a little kit that basically uh, is a jam nut that, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll show you that, how to use that in a minute. There's another way. This is a very popular one that I don't think is bad. This is a we'll call it a rubber riv nut. It does not require a tool or a special procedure. Just drill your holes to the same size as this and being that it's rubber you tighten it down and it, it, it'll collapse. And if you want to take them out later they come apart. So these are a good alternative. Here's another way. This way I think probably is the best of all. Um, let your daughter borrow your car and head on down to the local body shop. Every body shop has one of these rib nut tools. And these cars are not chick magnets. These cars are guy magnets. So your daughter drives up with your nice 67 Cougar to the local body shop. The shop empties out and they're all over the car. And they have it installed and some other suggestions and a discount coupon and everything within a few minutes. That's probably the best way to go. Or your wife. Don't bring your ugly mug down there. You're not getting it for free. Put a shirt on, by the way. Gaskets. Okay, so I told you to throw away the gasket. I suggest finding an original. Originals are hard to come by, and most people turn their nose up on them because they look all ugly. But look, you just take a little steel wool, and they're going to look like new. This little edge is all that really shows. So that, that's the best way to go, but you know, we don't always have these in stock. You can't always find them on, uh, on eBay. We have a reproduction of the plastic, and it's okay. But the problem is the supplier we, we have uh, on those is kind of erratic. We don't always have them in stock. So here's the last idea. If you're going to go with a rubber cheap gasket, 
at least this one by uh, Daniel Carpenter, has the ridge around it. You'll be taking your, your uh, blade and cutting a little off there, but that's yeah, better than the one that comes with it. Now where you put this mirror is up to you, but I like it to resemble the driver's side. They never offered a passenger side mirror from the factory. Even though your owner's manual says that it was an option available at your dealership, it wasn't. It was a one-size-fits-all mirror, and they never, it never looked just like that. It was kind of ugly, actually. So I'm going to measure from the base, the tip of the base, all the way to the tip of the door, and I'm going to come up with 9 and 1 8 inches. I'm going to go make a mark on the other door, and that's where I'm going to place the other one. Notice here we got about an eighth of an inch too. Here we go. Going from the tip of this door, which is about right there, and I said nine and one eighth. Put a dot right there. Okay, this looks looks like where I want it. By the way, don't use a Sharpie on your paint. Use a pencil or anything but a Sharpie. Good grief. Remember how I was saying uh, I don't really like this rubber gasket? Once it's against the chrome, you really see how uneven everything is. So you thought it was bad when you opened the package. Look now. Okay, let's go ahead and make a mark for that hole. And a mark for this hole. I chose some tape that's slightly translucent so I can see my, uh, my marks. And I just use tape just in case something goes wrong. And you want a tight fit. I do believe that's a quarter inch drill bit I just used. Okay, to uh, collapse the rib nut, you're going to have to operate three tools at once. It's actually not too hard. Look at this. Got my 7 16 wrench staying stationary and my Allen wrench staying stationary. And what I'm doing as I turn this is I'm collapsing that nut inside the door. It's really quite simple. Actually, it might be easier than that trip down to your local body shop to ask them for a favor. It's aluminum, so don't force it. When it feels pretty firm, stop. You're done. Take it out. Take a turn off this. There you go. Rock solid, just like the driver's side. That's not going anywhere. A lot more firm than the rubber one, I'll tell you that. probably overdid that one. The tool stopped where it should. I overdid it. Here is where most people get in trouble with this. They figure that there's two adjustments on here. Here's an adjustment and here's an adjustment. And those are in fact two critical adjustments. But here's where people go wrong. They put it on they try to adjust it, they don't realize there's a third adjustment. The third adjustment is right there. So you have to loosen that one up and know that you're gonna mess with all three adjustments. Now the best way to do this is to have two people involved. That way one person can sit here and rotate the head around and this around, the other person can sit there and say, yeah, that's where I want it. Then you get it all set up and you carefully move it over here and you tighten it up before you put it on. I don't have another person. 
but do know that basically you're really going to have to crank it around. It, it really needs to be overextended because keep in mind this was never really designed by Ford to be put on the car. This is an adaptation of the driver's side. I'm only going to put one screw in there because I want to I want to go sit in the car and make sure it's right before I put on the other one. Sometimes you got to take it off and mess with it a couple times. Okay, take a good look at the, about the position I got that mirror uh, adjusted at. That's what you're going to need to get this kind of view. Another tip is look at our convex mirror. Uh, it really amplifies, it gives you a broader spectrum of what's in your mirror. And I know classic cars didn't have them, but these cars didn't have this mirror either. So consider looking at our convex mirror. I hope this makes your installation a little easier. Thanks for watching.